Hello everybody, Tai Chi Twins here. I'm Jeremy Rorty. And I'm Joshua Rorty. Today we wanted to talk to you about using a cane. Not just for self-defense, but generally using a cane. The cane is touted as a very effective self-defense tool, which it definitely could be if you know how to use it. The main advantage of it is that canes aren't regulated like knives and guns. You can pretty much take a cane anywhere, depending on the style of cane that it is, of course. Even if you're going into a courthouse that doesn't allow weapons and you've got a combat cane, they can't just take your mobility device away from you. They at least have to have a regular cane to provide you. And if you know how to use a combat cane, you can also use a regular cane. Now, what a lot of martial arts styles that teach cane won't talk about is what if you really need to use the cane for mobility? Are you going to be able to use the cane for self-defense? And we're going to get to the bottom of that in this video. First of all, let's talk about the different styles of canes. You have fixed canes, which is one specific length. Sometimes you have to cut it down to be the right length. You have adjustable canes, which are, you know, you can lengthen and you can shorten. Kind of makes it nice if you've got different styles of shoes that you're wearing. Uh, and then, of course, you have folding canes that break down in the middle. There's also different styles of heads for your walking canes. Most people are familiar with the hook style of canes. You have a derby style where the top of it is a little flatter and also has a little knob at the end. You have ergonomic handles that are more designed to fit the contour of your hand. Then you also have walking sticks that just have the little knob at the end. A lot of times these are just accessories for fashion, but keep in mind if it's a big knob at the end, it could be considered a cudgel. Just keep in mind with any self-defense tool, if it's got a sword inside of it, if it's a cane that's designed for self-defense, you're going to have a hard time proving to a jury that you didn't buy that cane to hurt somebody. So you do have to be really careful when you buy weapons like that. Besides, some of them that have hidden weapons inside of them are illegal in certain states. Now let's talk about how long the cane should be. So uh, first of all, I'd recommend that if you're gonna be measuring this, normally you'd wanna wear the shoes that you're gonna wear every day. Kind of where the adjustable cane comes in handy because then if you're wearing different shoes every day, you can just adjust it up and down. Otherwise, you might wanna have two different canes, one for when you're walking around barefoot and another one for when you're walking around with shoes on. Now, if you're going to uh, measure the cane, it helps to have somebody else do it. So in this case, if I'm helping him measure the cane, I'd make sure that he's standing up nice and tall. His arms at his side with his elbow slightly bent. You never want to have your elbow locked out, especially when you're walking with a cane. Then what I do is I take the head of the cane, I put it on the ground right next to his foot, and then I measure it up to his wrist belt. So according to this, he'd need to cut about this much off of the cane for it to be a good length for him. If for some reason you don't have somebody to help you measure the cane, you can do this yourself. It might help to have a mirror that you can look into, that way you can see how straight your back is. You don't want to be leaning one way or another because that's going to adjust the length of the cane. But what I would do is take the bottom of the cane, put it on the ground right next to my foot, make sure I'm standing nice and straight, my elbows just slightly bent, and then when I grab the cane and I hold it up, right here's the top of my wrist, so there's where I cut it. And it looks like it came out to be about the same measurement that my brother had. The one thing to keep in mind when you're cutting down a wood cane, you don't want to cut too much off. It's hard to add more back to it. So what I usually do is just cut right above my mark, make sure I still have a little space there. I might try to walk with it and see if I need to cut that extra bit off, and I'll adjust it if I need to. Now let's talk about walking with the cane. 
If you need to use it for mobility, you want to hold it in the hand opposite of the leg that needs assistance. For myself, it was my right Achilles tendon that ended up getting injured, which meant I'd have to hold the uh, walking stick in the left hand. And the way it works out is you want to reach out with the cane at the same time you're stepping with the foot. This allows you to distribute your weight evenly between the injured leg and the cane. You can even lean a little bit more on the cane if you need to. If I take a couple of steps, here's what it would look like. Now, as far as the timing of the placing of the cane and the foot, a lot of people will tell you that they want the cane and the foot to hit the ground at the same time. From my experience with that foot being injured, that caused a lot of pain to the foot. Now, what you don't want to do is reach out and then step. But what I would do is I would make contact with the cane just before my foot. What that allowed me to do is transfer my weight to the cane so very little weight was on the injured leg. How do you hold the cane? Do you hold it with the horn facing away from you? Or do you hold it with the horn facing towards you? To answer that question, I'm going to show you the balance of the cane. Notice if I hold the cane here and I put my finger in the middle right where it rests, you see how it has a slight lean to the cane in one direction? If I turn the cane this way, the lean now goes the other way. From my experience walking with the cane, which way I held it depended on whether I was going uphill or whether I was going downhill. If I was going downhill, I wanted to hold it to where the balance of the cane was reaching forward. This allowed me to put a little bit more pressure downhill so that I didn't go falling forward. If I'm going uphill or maybe I'm using the cane to propel myself, I would want to hold the cane so that the balance is pointing backwards. This is going to allow me to push behind me as I walk with the cane and give myself a little bit more mobility. You would navigate stairs in a similar fashion. First thing I want to point out is if your stairs have railing, make sure you use that railing. That's going to help your balance a lot. In this case, I don't have railing to use. Uh, but I'm going to be using the timing of my feet. Now, there are a couple of methods for uh, navigating the stairs. If I'm really limited on my mobility, I want to navigate one step at a time. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. In this case, going up steps, I would reach up with the good foot first. That one's going to provide the support as I raise to the next level. Once I've got that foot there, I can balance my weight and then I can put the cane and the foot down at the same time. Going down the steps would be opposite. I would want to reach down with the cane and the bad foot first and then join it with the good foot. This is going to allow me a little bit of stability for the good for the bad foot while I take my step down. The other method is taking two stairs at a time. I'm not trying to sprint up the stairs, but I'm really trying to take the stairs in more of a normal fashion. In that case, the way it would work would be the same. Going up the stairs, I would start with my good foot. Then I would take the bad foot and the cane up to the next step, and so on. Same thing going down the steps. I would step down with the bad foot and the cane, and then provide the next one. Now, from my experience, it was my Achilles tendon that was hurting me. So both methods actually hurt for my foot. So I applied it slightly different. I used a little bit of the Tai Chi idea. The problem is the way I normally would carry the cane, you'll see the cane is away from my body. But if I take the cane and I can pin it into my hip, now I'm really leaning into the cane. I don't have to worry about the muscular and structure of the arm. So when I was going up the steps, what I would do is I'd hold it on the same side that was injured. So the camera can see it. If my left foot was injured, I'd step up with the bad foot and the cane, and I'd lean on the cane while I brought the other foot up. Bad foot and the cane, leaning on the cane while I pushed the other foot up. Going down to similar, I'll again switch the uh, cane so that you guys can see it in the camera. I would pin it up against my hip, have it close to my body so I don't have to use the strength of my bicep and my shoulder. And I'd reach down with the cane and slowly lower my foot. Now I'm not using strength, I'm using structure. And then I would just switch it back to my other hand for walking normally.
Now I just want to talk a little bit about what I figured out about holding the cane when you're not using it. Uh, so a common thing is just to take the hook and put it over your arm. One thing I want to point out is if I put it over my arm on the outside, I'm banging into things, especially if I'm trying to wash my hands and what have you. So if I do hook it on my arm, I like to hook it to have the cane towards my body. That way it's closer to me. I don't have to worry about hitting things. You know, besides just uh, hooking that cane on there like that, I can also go from holding it here, I'll kind of turn the side a little bit, I just take my fingers and I put it inside the horn and then I just let it rest up to my wrist. From there, if I need to grab it again, I just rotate my wrist, I grab the cane and I'm right back into a position where I'm holding it. From there, what if you don't want to hold it at all? You're in the bathroom. So a uh, good thing is if you've got a door handle, fits really well on a door handle. Problem is with most counters, you, I'll show you with the point, the whole thing will bounce right on the point. But if the counter is too low, the cane will fall over. So what you might end up having to do is leaning the cane sideways up against the wall or the counter that way instead of trying to use the hook. Now what if you're sitting down and you don't need the cane anymore? Now you'll see lots of people with canes, when they're sitting down, they'll hold it just like this, especially if they're on a bench that doesn't have a backrest. This gives me a way to put some of my body weight right here and take some of the weight off of my lumbar and off of my abdomen. Now if you're sitting down in a booth at a restaurant, one thing you don't want to do is have the cane on the outside of you. For one thing, somebody could just come up and grab it, but then also your weight staff is going to be kicking it, maybe knocking it over while they're trying to serve you. So as opposed to the outside, I might take it inside my body and I just take the hook and cup it underneath my armpit. Then I can even take my foot and rest it up in front of me and now my cane becomes a footrest. I can even do that on the outside of me. Again, I just trap the hook underneath my arm and then I bring the cane to the inside and I rest my foot on it. Kind of gives some elevation, especially if it's an ankle or your foot that's injured. If you're in a booth or you have a chair next to you, you might just hook it on the chair next to you or lay it down on the booth next to you. That way it's not in your way. Just don't forget the cane when you leave. Now's the part that you've all been waiting for. How do we use this cane as a weapon? So now there's lots of martial arts, like even in our Kali, that would teach you to just haul up onto the edge of it and you can swing it like this, which could be very effective, but what if he grabs a hold of it and I need this cane for mobility? I'm in a lot of trouble right now because if I need this cane for mobility and he takes it away from me, he's got the weapon and I don't have a way to get out of it. There's also more fancy things like in Hop Keto, they'll teach you certain things like how to be able to apply joint locks, which can be very effective. I've got a very strong lever here. I can even apply joint locks this way on those elbow, but if I need this for mobility, am I going to be able to stand and do all this stepping and twisting without this cane? So there are actually much more effective ways to be able to use the cane as a weapon. First of all, if I do pick up the cane like this, doesn't he know that's a weapon? Let's talk about the horn again. If he's becoming a threat to me, I'm going to stand where the cane is between him and me. That way, if he needs to get to me, he's going to have to go through the cane first. If I have the uh, horn pointed forward, I can easily just pick it up a little bit and I can drive it right into his stern. As he's coming in, I can even pick it up and hit him right on the top of the foot, which could also be very painful. Another reason to have this forward is notice I can grab the tip of it with my finger. And now I've got this motion that I can be whack, which can certainly change his attention, especially if I go whack first and then whack second. And then I might be able to get away. Maybe I'm using a combo like a whack, one to the face, one to the foot, and then I'm hollowing away. That's really going to be a more effective way of using your cane and all these fancy joint locks and different angles of attack. Another way is if I've got this horn pointing forward, I can use this as a leverage point. If he's trying to hit me, now I can just step off to the side and make a miss, and at the same time, I can use the horn to bring this around to his gut, to his knee, 
to his shin, to his ankle, anywhere in here is going to be a painful spot to hit. I'll show you facing the camera. It would be stepping this way and using the momentum of my body to swing the staff that way. One disadvantage to swinging the weapon. If he's coming in to grab me and I swing it this way, I hit him, but I don't stop him. He can still get up and get a hold of me. So one of the things I can do is if I'm standing here with the weapon between him and me, I can step back and I can use the tip. I've got them both hands, so I can actually push them away if I need to. Now, if I don't have a lot of mobility, I may not be able to push them away. But I might be able to stop them briefly and then take the other end around like it's quarter staff, come back and hit him in the ankle, and then try to get away while he's in pain. Another effective technique I can use, even if I need to use this for mobility, is to be able to trip my opponent. Now, I'm not talking about the guys running by you and you're going to put the stick between his legs and make him trip that way. No, that could be effective. But in this case, if he's being aggressive at me, two things you're going to notice. His feet and his head. This is what we call the fighter's triangle. There's a triangle right with his feet between this foot being back, if you measure the triangle here. There's also a triangle here between his head and knee. Either one of those triangles is telling me that this is an indicator of attack. So one thing I can do is I can take my cane and I can reach right between his feet. Once I have the cane between his feet, I'm going to pin it to the ground and then I'm going to step in the direction of the leg that I want to push. You can see how much that affected his body. Now that was just putting it between his feet and behind the leg. This can be made even more effective if I can find a spot behind this other heel. That's going to keep him from stepping with that foot. Again, I put it behind the heel, I pin it there, and then I step. I'm using my whole body weight to move his leg. In conclusion, if you know how to use a cane, it's a very effective tool as well as an effective self-defense weapon. You just want to be aware of your mobility needs. If you really need that 80 to 100% of your mobility, you're not going to be able to use a cane as a self-defense weapon. Sorry to break it to you, but that's not a possibility. So if you are thinking about that, you might want to have a different self-defense weapon, like a gun. If you are going to use a gun, make sure you get out on the range with that gun and your cane and make sure that that gun's not going to knock you flat on your butt when you try to fight it. Pepper spray is another good option. And a lot of times your pepper spray, you could connect right to your cane so you don't even have to worry about carrying it separately. You pepper spray him first, then you might have some combat techniques you can use and then get away from the person. When you're selecting your cane, make sure you understand what you need that cane for. That way you know what style to get. Buying something that's an extendable cane made of aluminum might be really useful. Like we mentioned before, if you have to change your footwear or different conditions, I can adjust the length of that. But aluminum cane and self-defense may not be very sturdy. And also, if you buy a cane that looks like a weapon, that could be a whole other set of trouble. So just make sure you understand what you need that for and make sure you get the right cane for you. Thanks for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, like it and make sure to share that with a friend. Click the subscribe button and then hit that notification bell so you can catch our next exciting video.